This is Code.org. I'm currently working on CS Principles, Unit 5, Building Apps, Lesson 13, Introduction to Arrays, Puzzle 26. Last button. Oh, good, good. Now we're going to have both directions, right? So you should have run, next, next, right? I can go one way, uh, but I want to go through my list both. So our user can now move forward through our list of favorite things. And we're about to write the code that allows them to move backwards as well. If we write your code to reference, if you've written your code to reference your global index, which we have, right? Item index, item index, item index. So if you've written it like that, then this should only require you decrease its value by one. Yeah, we can just decrease it by one, definitely. And reuse code that updates the screen output. Oh, we could use a variable for that. Oh, this is going to be cool. Before we write the code for backwards, let's work on cleaning up our code. Okay. Removing repeated code. Once you add the code for moving backwards through your array, your program will have three places, three places where it updates the screen by setting the text on your screen elements of your screen elements. Rather than repeating this code, as always, instead of repeating code function, you should write a function. Functions are friends. <laughs> we should create a function that updates the screen and then call it every time we need to refresh those elements. This will not only make our program easier to read and avoid the errors that can't arise from redundant code, but it also makes it easier to change to, to make changes to how our program runs since all the code that updates this screen is in a single place. Yes, functions are terrific for a million reasons, right? And um, they eliminate redundancy. They increase adaptability. Uh, they allow for abstraction in code, versatility, right? Abstraction, functions, friends, great. Replace the write a function that contains set text commands you have updated on your screen. Okay, I'm going to go to show blocks. I think it's easier to see. So I need a new function. Uh, do we have a parameter? I'm not sure. I'll do this anyways. Okay. Add an event handler to the last set text. And the last one, I just copied and pasted this text from up here. So it makes sense that we are going to use a function for it. Okay. And then I'm going to get rid of it here. Because now I can do a function call. Remember, in a function, your program does not run a function unless you ask it to. So the code in our function right now is not getting run. The computer says, yep, there's code in there. You have to say nicely. Well, I guess you don't have to say nicely, but... Uh, asking it to run the function. Uh, I'm going to call mine. My function here is going to be update screen. All right, we're updating the screen area. So that's what I'm calling it. I know, creative. Update screen is where I'm going to... This is asking the computer, hey, computer. So first, the computer will make a favorites array variable. The computer will then make an item index variable and set it to zero. Then we say computer update screen, and it says, what? Where's that? Uh, uh, ah, drops down, and it's going to run this code. So we also want to call it here, right, where we did for if we hit next, we want to add one to the index, and item index can be reached because we declare it up here. So this function, and an event handler is a function, well, it runs the function, this function can see what item index is. So it can add one to it, and then it can use it in this function here, item index, right? So everywhere can see and use item index. That's the handy thing about that. All right, update. Okay. Add an event handler for the last button. Ah, okay. Uh. An event that decreases the global index variable by one and then updates the screen by calling your function. Well, that's easy enough. So it's basically this. What we did for next, I'm going to do copy and then I'm going to right click and hit paste. Except instead of adding one to it, because remember plus plus adds one, I'm going to do minus minus, which is the same thing as writing equals 
uh, item index minus one. It's the same thing. It's just the shorthand. So now when we click on uh, ID, so let's go back to box. When we click on the last button, what should happen is our item index, our global item index variable should decrease by one. We then run update screen and we've taken one out of item index, so it should update accordingly. My problem is what happens if we get below zero, but I guess we're not going to worry about that. You may notice that your program throws an error if the global index variable goes out of bounds. Don't worry. Leave it for now. All right. So let's give this a shot. Next. Next. YouTube. Teaching. Eh? Code. Let's see. Oh, yep. There's there. Cool, though. And it's nice because this function can be used here, 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 and we don't have to keep rewriting that code. So awesome. Let's uh, keep going.